Hi, I'm Jessica from So Many Creations, and I'd like to introduce you to the Lola Crossbody. Lola has a zippered pocket, recessed zippered closure, adjustable handle, and center divider. In this video, I'll show you two ways to finish your Lola, or any bag for that matter. So here are my tips for a turnstile bag as well as a drop lining. Enjoy! I've gone ahead and completed my outside and lining. I added a handmade tag, which is completely optional, and I've attached my handle. One thing to keep in mind is that the hardware should always be facing towards the bag. I've also completed my lining. I finished sewing across the bottom, boxed the corners, installed my recessed zipper, and I have left an opening in my zippered pocket. For a turn bag, it's very important that you have an opening. Typically, I leave it in the bottom, but for this pattern, I left it in the pocket. My lining has a recessed zippered closure as well as a zippered pocket, and there's a great video on my YouTube channel with step-by-step -step instructions if you want to check it out. Inside, there's also a divider. The divider is attached on the sides as well as the bottom, so that can make these last steps a little bit challenging. I boxed my corners and I closed my lining bottom completely because I have left an opening in my zippered pocket. And don't forget to open your zipper. Now I'm going to put the outside into the lining. What I like to do first is roll up the outside bottom just a little bit and add a few clips. This will help to get it inside of the lining a little bit easier. Remember with this style bag, we're putting the outside inside the lining and turning later, but with the divider in the middle, it can make it a little trickier. I'm going to put this into one half of the lining and it doesn't matter which side. So I'm just gonna put it right next to the divider. Slide the outside and handle in and make sure that you completely push the handle down as well as the recessed zipper. You don't want to catch those while you're sewing. The top edge of the lining and the edge of the outside are the only two pieces that you want to stitch. Just those two right there. I'm going to line up the side seams and add a clip. I like to nest my seams, and in this case, I actually push them in the same direction to eliminate some of the bulk next to the handle. And then I added a clip. I'm going to the other side, and I'm going to do the exact same thing, pushing the handle down and trying to keep it as straight as I can. Sometimes when you're doing this, the handle can get pushed to one side, and I like to straighten it to make sure that it looks its best when it's finished. So again, I line up my side seams and I'm going to add another clip. Then I'm going to continue clipping all the way around, or you should at least do half. If you're not comfortable or having any issues getting it completely clipped, you can just clip half, take it to your sewing machine, sew it, and then come back and clip the other half. Again, sometimes because of the divider, some of these steps can be a little tricky and a little bit awkward to try to get all the pieces to fit together, but trust me, it's worth it in the end. Once I have that sewn, I'll be able to turn it through the hole I left in my zippered pocket. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and finish up the sewing on this top part. I have gone ahead and stitched around the top edge of the bag. I like to stitch twice just to make sure that I catch everything and to straighten it out if it wasn't neat and perfect the first time around. I'm going to go ahead now and turn my bag through the hole in the zippered pocket. So first I'll reach in and open the zipper the rest of the way. It was only open about halfway. And now I'm just going to gently pull the outside of the bag and the lining through the hole, removing clips as I go. I just keep working, pulling gently, take the handle out and keep turning until everything is right side out. Now normally I would be turning through a hole left in the bottom of the lining, but because we sewed the divider to the bottom, I left my opening in the zippered pocket, and you can do this with any of your bags. As long as you have a hole somewhere in the lining, a turnstile bag will work. And you can see here, down at the bottom of the divider, it's not attached completely in the corners. In the pattern, you actually cut a little bit of an angle on both edges, and that was because these steps would be much too difficult if you tried to keep that straight and sew it into all of the seams. So the divider is attached on the sides and bottom. There's just a little tiny bit of an opening. Now that I have my bag completely turned, I can take this to the sewing machine and close it. 
I have gone ahead and turned the raw edges of the pocket under and stitched about an eighth of an inch. Now I'm going to tuck that back into the pocket itself. I'm going to take the rest of the lining and tuck it back inside the bag. It can be a little tricky again just because it's stiff with interfacing, so just take your time and push the lining into the outside of the bag. I use my fingers to work the corners at the bottom, straighten out the divider, and I do as much work as I can before I take it to the ironing board. Once I have that tucked in, I'm going to start working around the top edge of the bag. I like to finger press this seam again before I take it to my iron, just to make sure that I have everything nice and neat. And if it helps, especially if you have cork, which can be a little stiffer than the canvas I'm working with, you can go ahead and clip this top edge. It'll keep everything neat for you while you're getting ready to top stitch. You can see here I needed to roll it just a little bit more. One side worked out smoothly and one side didn't, and that's pretty typical. So I'm just taking some clips, clipping around my edge so I can take it to the sewing machine and do my final top stitching. Once I have that done, my bag is complete and I don't have any other openings to close. I'll tuck the zipper down, keep the handle up. As you can see, I've gone ahead and finished up my top stitching. I chose to do a quarter of an inch top stitch, which is what I normally do. My zipper is closed right now, but while I'm doing my top stitching, I always keep it open and tuck the zipper tail down in and keep my handle facing outward. Again, I finger press and then take it to the iron before I do any of my stitching. And if you have a free arm on your sewing machine, that helps tremendously. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a drop lining. Typically, I complete my bags by doing a turnstile, which is what I showed here in the sample. That means that the outside is completed as well as the lining. I've boxed the corners on both and left an opening at the bottom of the lining, or in the last case, in the zippered pocket. I then take my outside and place it right sides together inside the lining. It always feels a little bit backwards, but they're right sides together, which is what I want. I tuck my outside down into the lining, line up the side seams and sew around the top just like I showed you. Then I will turn it through the hole in the lining or in the zippered pocket. So let's talk about drop linings now. A drop lining means that the outside and lining are both finished, but rather than placing them right sides together, you actually place them wrong sides together, as the bag would be when it was finished. No turning. They both have turned under edges that can be put together by placing the lining inside of the outside and then top stitching around. So why would you want to do one versus another? Maybe a divider or maybe a fabric that you don't want to press again. It's always good to have two different options for finishing a bag. So here are some of my tips and tricks on how I get this edge ready for a drop lining. I'll grab my lining here. You can see I've sewn the sides as well as the bottom, but I have not boxed my corners yet. I wait for that. I need a couple of things to do this. I need my quarter inch wide fusible tape, I need a pen, and I need a ruler. The first thing I'm going to do is take my fusible tape, this has paper on it, which is very important for this technique, and I'm going to place it right along the top edge on one side of the lining. I just work on half at a time. This is why I don't like to box my corners. I like to keep it flat. Once I have that in place, I'll grab my scissors and just cut off the roll. And I'm gonna use my iron to fuse that down. This is why you want tape that has a paper backing. And I'm not gonna take that paper backing off just yet. I fuse that down. I'm gonna turn the lining over. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. One thing to note, make sure that the top edge of your lining has been trimmed that it's even and doesn't have a lot of frays. That will help to keep this neat. The whole idea of a drop lining is to make sure that you have clean edges that you can put together. So once I have that tape in place, I'll go ahead and fuse that as well. And I use a little bit of steam. So now comes the pen and the ruler. I've left my paper on, so I have my fusible. But what I'm going to do is place my ruler right on the edge of the paper, so a quarter of an inch down from the edge and I'm going to use my ballpoint pen and draw a line right next to the paper. By doing this and using a heavy hand, I'm actually scoring the fabric and interfacing. And when I show you how I do my fusing, you'll see why that helps a lot. 
it's going to make the edge nice and straight. It's going to make it perforated almost, and it will fold a little bit easier. So now that I've done that on both sides, I'm gonna peel the paper off on just one side. Again, work on one side at a time. And you can see how nicely that folds over on that pen line. So I'm not worrying where I start. It doesn't matter from right at the very edge. And I'm just gonna fold, turn your steam off because you don't wanna burn your fingers, and just run my iron along that edge, fuse down as much as you can. I didn't get the whole thing, but that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. I'm gonna take my paper off and I'm going to repeat that here as well. What I do like to do on this second side is go right to my seam. And I didn't use the iron, I just finger pressed, but I opened up the top of that seam and then folded it over. This eliminates some of the bulk and it just comes out neater. I use a clip to hold it in place, work around with my fingers, and the tape is not super sticky, but sometimes it'll hold itself down just for a few seconds while you grab your iron. So I'm just gonna iron, and I do this in little bits and pieces. I'm jumping over to the other side, using my fingers to open up and flatten that side seam, and press that over. Now the sample I'm using is just a very simple little pouch. There's no zippers or pockets, obviously, for demo purposes. But this works even for the bag that I showed you in the beginning that has a divider, a recessed zipper, and a zippered pocket. So this will work with any of your bags. So you can go ahead and iron and fuse those edges down and work your way around. I'll take my clips out and really work those sides. There's no interfacing, or excuse me, tape underneath those little um, edges on the seam, but that's fine. If you press it, it'll stay neat. And I like to do this style lining if I have a divider or a fabric that I pressed really nicely that I don't want to crease again. Uh, perhaps I'm doing a bag that has lots of pockets inside or just, want to change it up a little bit. It's always good to have different ways that you can finish your bags. Now I'm gonna box the corners. I've gone ahead and boxed my corners just like I did on the outside. Because I have already prepared the edges of my lining as well as my outside, all I need to do to finish up this bag is tuck the lining into the outside. As I always do, I'm going to line up my side seams using some clips to hold that in place. The only difference here is that I don't have to turn this bag when I'm done. I just clip it in place, get everything lined up, and take it to the machine and top stitch. When I'm top stitching a drop-in lining, I tend to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. The quarter of an inch just doesn't feel secure enough to me, and I really want to keep those edges nice and tight and together. So now you've seen the difference between a turn style bag and a drop-in lining. I hope you enjoyed this video, and you'll try out some of my techniques in your next bag. Thanks for joining me.